In a previous video, we looked at how you construct a pro forma income statement. And the approach we used was what's referred to as the percentage of sales method. What you do is you need some forecasts. So our marketing department has, has uh, done some estimates, done some surveys, and estimated that we'll sell about a million units and that we'll be able to sell them at $400 a piece. And the way we get this income statement is we assume some of these other variables are some percentage of sales revenues. In this case, we happen to have cost of goods sold is 84% of sales revenue. And if you take 84% of 400 million, you get 336 million. And we looked at some real world companies and we found that their cost of goods sold percentage tends to be fairly stable over time. Unless the company is changing what its business does, if you tend to produce computers, then the cost of producing a computer is going to be roughly the same percentage of your sales revenues. Now, if you switch from being a computer company to being a consulting company, as IBM has done, you may see a change in that number. But in general, this is a good method for, using, uh, for doing the forecasting. We also assume that sales and general administrative expenses were 9% of sales revenue. So we created this pro forma income statement, this forecasted income statement. We've tried to put the variables up here, such as sales growth, so we can change that number. If I change this number to uh, 0%, you'll see we go back, the sales doesn't grow at all. So it allows us to do some, some analysis to see how sensitive um, our project is to different changes in different variables. What we'd like to do is modify this so that we can do some some real analysis, some analysis in capital budgeting. That is, we'd like to be able to figure out is the project any good? And we can use tools like NPV, net present value, internal rate of return, IRR, and also the profitability index to determine that. So we want to do some calculations. We want to extend this spreadsheet. Now what we've done here is I've made a couple of additional assumptions. I have a cost of capital here of 10%. That's the required return uh, that the people who provide the capital to the firm need in order to fund the project. We also made an assumption on the initial investment. Okay, In this case, it's going to be $100 million to get this project going in spending on plant and equipment, etc. And we're also going to have to make an investment in working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So a good way to think of it is, for example, you may f be familiar around Christmas time, there are a lot of little kiosks that set up in the shopping malls. And they set up just for a short time period. They're not there for a long time, it's not a store. They're only going to be there during the Christmas season. And one example is they're, at every shopping mall, there's always a kiosk selling calendars. They're very popular around Christmas time. What is that, what is that person invested? At the beginning of the period, say they begin October 1st, they make an investment in calendars. That's their working capital. And what we're going to assume is that at the end of the period, Okay, they may be out of there by February 1st. They'll have sold off all of their inventory and gotten back their working capital. And we'll show you that in the spreadsheet in a minute. So in order to do this, we need to do some calculations. We need to figure out what operating cash flows are. And then once we figure out all the net cash flows, we can calculate NPV and IRR. So if we take a look here, operating cash flow can be calculated as earnings before interest and taxes plus depreciation minus taxes. And the reason we add back in depreciation, because actually in the calculation of EBIT, we subtract depreciation. And then we're going to add it back in later. Why? Because we need to add it back in because it's a non-cash expense. The reason we subtracted it out before is it does affect cash flow because it affects taxes. Depreciation is tax deductible for the firm. So in this case, we want to subtract it out so we get the proper 
tax uh, amount to pay, but we're going to add it back in because as a non-cash expense, you don't actually take money out of your bank account and pay someone for depreciation. It's an accounting thing. Another way to calculate operating cash flow is net income plus depreciation if there doesn't happen to be any interest expense. Okay, so that even makes it a little simpler. So let's go back to our, our spreadsheet here. And you'll notice that I called it operating profit here, but that's EBIT. And there's no interest expense anywhere here, so we can use the second formula. Operating cash flow will be equal to net profit, okay, or, or net income, I called it net profit here, okay, plus depreciation. So let's do that. This is going to be equal to C27 plus C24. All right, and then we can just copy this formula down. Okay, that's the beauty of the spreadsheet. And so you can see the different cash flows. Okay, 11,700 plus uh, the 10 million in depreciation. That gives us 21,700,000. And you can see that if you did the math, should be correct for all of these. All right, what else do we have? We had an investment in working capital. Our working capital here is 25 million. So we've invested 25 million. That happens to be in cell B12. So we'll just put that in there. And we're, what we're going to assume is that we don't make any additional investment in working capital. Although you can, again, you can modify this. You can assume that working capital grows if sales happen to grow or that it falls if sales happen to grow or forecasted sales happen to grow. There's a lot of modifications you can make, but we're going to try and keep it simple here. The initial investment is in cell B13. And you have to put the equal sign in, otherwise it'll just give me a label. And so uh, that's 100 million. And what's our investment cash flow? Our investment cash flow is we're actually going to be paying that out. So this is going to be negative. So this is going to be minus B29 plus B30. Okay, so we invested 125 million at the beginning of the period. And what is our net cash flow going to be? All right. Oh, one more thing. Our investment cash flow, we're going to get back our net working capital here. So at the end of the period, we're going to get back uh, the 25 million, and that's in cell B12. Okay, so what's our net cash flow? Our net cash flow is going to be our investment in our investment cash flow plus all of these cash flows, operating cash flows, plus this. So let's see if we can't put that in there. This is going to be B31. And then this formula here is going to be equal to C28 plus, and we can take the sum of everything else there, sum of C29 to C31, okay? There's nothing else there, so we'll just get that number, but it will make a difference down here. And let's just copy the formula down. All right, so we have our net cash flows. And let's calculate NPV. NPV is going to be equal to the present value of these cash flows, okay, minus the cost. This is already negative, so we'll add that negative cash flow in. Now be careful, if you use the NPV function, NPV in Excel and every other spreadsheet doesn't actually calculate NPV. What it does is it calculates the present value of these cash flows. You don't want this to be in present value terms, so you're going to have to use it 
for these cash flows and then add back in this negative number. And where's our, the first thing you need is the interest rate and the cost of capital happens to be in cell B4. So let's put that in, B4. And then what are the values? The value, values are in C32. And you put a colon so that you can tell it all these different cash flows to G32. And then you're going to add back in the negative um, investment here, which is in B32. Oh, we get a, a big negative number here. Okay. Let's put in internal rate of return. IRR is going to be equal to we can use the IRR function. This one does do the correct calculation, so we can say B32 to G32, and it tells us 4%. Now, it always gives you a whole number, and you really should have more decimal places. So you can go up here and just click this on to increase the decimal places, so it's 4.08%. And the profitability index is going to be the present value of these cash flows divided by the absolute value of the investment. Okay, So in this case it's going to be equal to, we can use the NPV function, so we can go from C32, I'm sorry we need an interest rate that's in B4, C32 to G32 and let's divide that by the negative of B32. Okay, so it's 0.83 something or other. Okay, so we can see this is not a good project. But what can we do? Because we've put all these variables in, we can tweak some of these numbers. For example, what if the cost of capital went down to 8%? What would happen? Still pretty negative, 14 million, okay, not, not very good. Okay, what would happen here if, if perhaps sales grew at 10%? How does that work out? Okay, still negative, it's a little bit better. All right, what if we could reduce our cost of goods sold to 75%? Ooh, now it becomes positive. So let's go back to our original cost of capital of 10%. And we'll go back to our sales growth rate of 5%. But we've reduced our cost of goods sold. Now it's a good project. Okay, So you can see you can tweak different numbers to see when it will work and when it won't. All right, What if sales didn't grow at all? Okay, it's actually still positive. So sales growth doesn't seem to be that important. This cost of goods sold is very important. So if we could get our cost of goods sold down, that would make a big difference. Okay, or perhaps, let's go back to our 84%. Maybe we can sell it at a higher price. How about if we sold it at 500? Okay, and again, you can't just make up these numbers. You have to have a reason for being able to sell it at a higher price. but Creating a spreadsheet like this allows you to do a lot of what-if analysis. All right, in this case, it turned out to be quite negative, so you had to make some optimistic assumptions in order to get it to be positive. But suppose it came out positive, and you were assuming a 5% growth rate in sales. Maybe sales won't grow that fast. Maybe they'll only grow at 2%. You were assuming you were selling it at 500. Maybe you can't sell it for 500. Maybe you can only sell it for 450. You can do a lot of what-if analysis, and if you find that it's still positive after you do the analysis, then it's a good project. So I hope this helps you create this spreadsheet. This should be um, this can be very useful for a small business. Okay, if you can you can set up your analysis and determine you know whether you should buy that additional you know, uh, machine for your business, okay, whether you should open a second uh, bagel shop on the other side of town, this is a great way to do it.